So a built-in feature of Turbo is displaying progress with a progress bar, and it's able to basically customize the look and feel of it uh, with CSS. Um, a funny thing I think is how you disable it is simply just adding CSS. So you'd think there'd be maybe an API for that or some sort of setting, but at the same time, it's not a big deal. But this guide is going to give you an inside look at what you can achieve with customizing the turbo progress bar and how you'd go about it. Progress bar itself is simply just a div that has some custom styles essentially appended to it with JavaScript events firing in the background based on what's happening behind the scenes. And those events are part of Turbo, so there are different events you can hook into to kind of manipulate it if you want to. Out of the box, the, the defaults honestly are perfectly fine in my opinion. Um, Rails apps have gotten so quick nowadays that you don't even really see this progress bar, but on those certain pages, maybe big long queries or data you're pulling back from a huge table, um, you need to have some sort of um, notification or instance on the page it's going to notify the user that something's taking place so this is kind of their answer to that there is a ability to set the progress delay so it actually sets a delay in between uh, of the progress showing ultimately i think the defaults again are fine but i have a quick app here i uh, scaffolded it's got a darker theme i put a post scaffold so it's simple post model with a text for the content and a string for the title Clicking through to the post, I've added a little sleep method for Ruby just to sh kind of slow things down because ultimately you're going to want to see the progress bar. So this helps you see it. If you look real close on my screen, there's a small blue line that appears when you put, load the page. But based on that sleep method, it's going to show a little bit longer than normal. If I took that away, you would hardly see it. But the whole goal is to kind of manipulate that specific bar so we can tweak it to match our needs so with this ui and the dark scheme i kind of wanted to make it like a a yellow look instead of the blue which is the default and you can do that pretty simply i've got tailwind nude up here um, so if i were to do that you'll see it's a, a different height because we set a new height and a different color so it's quite easy to change of course if you know how to write css or tailwind for instance this is kind of a version to do that um, it would be neat to be able to kind of go into the Turbo Progress Bar HTML and add Tailwind there, but currently you can't do anything like that since it's a different API uh, and not really accessible. It's on the JavaScript end. Um, but if you wanted to do a basic example, that's one approach I would take. Now you can go further with some gradients and make it a little nicer on the eyes. Uh, this one's going to be refreshing here, uh, like a yellow to red to orange, kind of more of a gradient. And then if you want to add shadow, it's totally possible. I've done a few examples here just to give you some ideas of what can be done. So I'll refresh that, click this, and now it's kind of a blue with a, a kind of uh, opaque shadow there. So simple things you can change just using Tailwind. It's pretty nice. One little additional step I would add if you do the gradient is to add a little more of animation in the play. And you can do that with something called like a gradient shift and it just changes the background positions and it's an animation that runs over and over so we have it as a linear animation that's infinite you can control the the speed at which it goes i've set the height here quite large so it's easier to see but you can see the difference here let me refresh the page uh there we go you'll see it moving now so it's kind of Loading with that width, that style under the scene, under, behind the scenes, the style is being, um, the width is changing. So that's what's happening with JavaScript on the HTML element. But then you can, you know, hook into that and get this loading effect in real time. That one's pretty nice to me. I, I think I'd prefer that one if I were to really customize it. Um, and then you could go one step further and make something super custom. So let me show you kind of the approach I took with this. And would I use this in production? Probably not, but it is kind of a neat thing you could do if you wanted to get fancy. So on the front end, I needed to change and add a partial called loader. Um, there's considerable markup there that I want to add to make this work. It's kind of a full page uh, feel within the center is like a loading bar that we have, but we also show a percentage base. So it's going to go from zero to 100 and you'll see that as it loads. Um, it's not perfect by any means, but it is a kind of a, an approach you could take to get somewhere 
at that effect. Maybe you could add a loader like an SVG or something. Um, it's all dependent on Turbo, of course. And you'll see when I mentioned the events, we hook into quite a few events to get this to work. Uh, I made a stimulus controller called Loading Bar. Let me open up the view to give you more context. So in this loader partial, this is what I'm rendering. We've got an ID on that custom loading bar. Essentially it's hidden by default. So our JavaScript will hook into it and show it initially, but then we'll also trigger um, data width on this progress bar to display like normal. And at the same time when we're doing this, we're actually disabling the original turbo progress bar. And that's because I can't really hook into that and really customize it greatly. So instead you need to kind of reinvent the wheel. And that explains all the JavaScript here. Now, like I said, this is advanced. This is something I don't know if I would do, but it is an approach you could take if you want to go full custom. Some apps like the attention to detail like that. And I think it goes a long way with branding and whatnot. So it's, it's hearsay if you want to go that route, but this is kind of what I came up with. So we've got a controller called loading bar. Um, inside of it is like this full width uh, div. It's got a set width on the center part, which is kind of going to be a um, opaque black rounded corner box. Inside of that, we'll have the, the same progress bar, but it's going to be on a smaller scale. And then below that, we'll say display a percentage that counts up from zero to 100. Uh, let me go and show you pretty much what that looks like on the JavaScript side. A little more involved here, like I said, and we need to essentially before uh, on the connect instance method. So the lifecycle method will find the hide bar method to essentially find the bar, the pro progress bar, um, and add a class of hidden to it if it's already present. And that will be kind of what fires here first. And then we'll have these before visit functions that essentially show the bar. So it's kind of hooking into the turbo lifecycle methods. So when you click a link, um, turbo behind the scenes is kind of doing that thing where it you know, transitions the page, injects the HTML and does that magic. Um, but then you can hook into different instances of that. If you go to the handbook on Turbo, there's quite a few events you can hook into the, to play around with. On the document, essentially you could do those. So here's the drive event events that allow you to track the navigation lifecycle of the page. So can get advanced here if you want it to be. Um, so I've, I'm using one called before visit. I'm using one before fetch response. Uh, that gives you a little more hook into uh, some of that stuff. Maybe we'll do before render. To make that a little more performant. I don't even know if that one was a, I had a wrong one in here. I think it was a typo. We'll see. Um, so let's try that. And I'll show you pretty much what it looks like. So I'm going to make sure it's uncommented. I've got that partial. We're loading this in our CSS. I'll show you here, we have a linear gradient. It's three different colors to show that effect. We're doing that gradient shifting here as well. The width is gonna be transitions. So we'll do that with JavaScript and we can add some CSS to make it more gradual. And then this gradient shift keyframe is being fired on the animation. So it's kind of the similar thing we just had up here, but a little more advanced and we have to disable the initial default. So let's try what that looks like. There it is there. And it's quick. It's not perfect, but it is a approach you could take. So now that's shifted to the center. Um, it does have this weird delay that I can't quite figure out. I don't know if it's in another event I can hook into, but there is, when I click the link, it does the loader and then it will kind of just stop at one point and then eventually redirect. And I noticed Turbo kind of does that by the default too. So it's kind of maybe just something part of the API, but that is something to take into account. Seems to be pretty fun to mess with if you wanted to go that route. So that's just an approach you could take. Um, it's definitely doable, but my um, hesitancy is comes back into play when you were to maybe disable the sleep method here and you come back and you're gonna see it kind of be, wah, you can barely see it, you know? So um, to each his own, I guess, if you wanna take that approach. But on the longer uh, loading, functions or something of that effect. Maybe you can hook into it based on what link you click. If you know in advance, um, if this, this action or background job or something's going to perform and things are going to take a while, that could be an approach you take where you maybe target a specific link to add that loader instead of the default. So it's something to keep in mind. So it gives you options basically. So 
That's a look at turbo custom loaders. Um, I think I would prefer the Devaults ultimately, but I think this is a nice exercise to go through if you're considering adding a little more flair to your loading indicator. All right, that's it for now. I'll see you in the next video. Hello Hotwire is a free course geared toward building Ruby on Rails apps with Hotwire from the ground up. Visit hellohotwire.com to learn more.